By the end of this video, you're gonna have a complete roadmap for generating your first $100,000 on TikTok. You will ask for it. I'm not gonna hold back a thing in today's video. This is genuinely gonna be an entire masterclass on well over a dozen ways that you can leverage TikTok to make some serious money. TikTok monetization has kind of always been this massive gray area on the platform, and I feel that creators are extremely misinformed with how to properly turn a profit with TikTok. And a lot of videos out there that talk about TikTok monetization often oversimplify things a bit too much without giving real action steps and practical details. So that's what I made sure to dedicate this course to today. Just for context, I generated nearly a quarter of a million dollars last year directly because of TikTok, which by the way, you can learn about that journey in this mini documentary of a video, which will be linked down below. And I tell you just from last year and really these past few years, there are a ton of viable monetization avenues that no one really talks about and I wanna bring light to today. We're gonna to pull back all the curtains in today's video and discuss tools, tips, and tactics for making money on TikTok, including, but not limited to, how to navigate TikTok's internal monetization platforms, how to land brand deals, how to craft your MVOs, what I've learned from spearheading well over a dozen influencer marketing campaigns. And I wanna show you examples, lots of examples of creators that are monetizing even those that have very small audiences as well and so much more. I'm super excited. Here are the timestamps for today's masterclass if in case you want to jump ahead. Of course, I would highly recommend watching this video until the end because at the very end, we're going to take a few of your very own profiles and develop a real custom monetization strategy so you can see how to practically apply all this information that we're going to discuss. Finally, I want to add that TikTok is currently in the process of rolling out some new monetization tools. And so any new popular methods to monetize on TikTok that I'm just not able to cover in this video because they're not yet released least will be covered in depth on this channel and I'll be sure to link those future videos down below when I get around to creating them so be sure to check for those without further ado let's get the show on the road and enjoy the presentation all right we're going to start by talking about thresholds for beginning monetization on TikTok at what stage in your TikTok journey should you be considering monetizing on the platform well, the simple answer is that there is no one size fits all threshold. And I'll explain what I mean by that because it really depends on what particular method of monetization you are planning on pursuing as a creator. Is it direct monetization or is it indirect monetization? Direct monetization is where you have your audience paying you directly for something that you provide them. This can be an interaction, it can be providing them a service or a product, whether physical or digital. Knowledge creators, for example, those that maybe output career focused content or educational content can often monetize as soon as five to 10,000 followers because you only need five to 10 people from your audience paying you, let's just say a few hundred dollars for you to start bringing them some serious revenue. Now, on the other hand, when it comes to something like indirect monetization, where you have a third party that pays you like in a traditional brand deal or using TikTok's own monetization platforms, which we're going to talk about here momentarily, the threshold for engaging with this kind of monetization is actually much higher. Usually these methods do not yield a significant amount of revenue if you have any less than 100,000 followers. And this 100,000 follower threshold is not some arbitrary threshold that I made up. It's actually there strategically for a few reasons. First of all, if you're an entertainment or personality forward profile, it is absolutely imperative that you first establish a winning content strategy for TikTok and something like this takes time. You don't want to jump the gun and suddenly start redirecting all your attention into trying to rake in profits from TikTok too early on in the game. TikTok is a platform where it takes time to creatively master. And I can tell you, we encourage all of our clients to get multiple breakthrough videos under their belts first. And by the way, breakthrough videos are videos that are able to achieve a surplus of a million views. Do that a couple times first before you start making serious attempts to cash in on all the attention that you've generated. It's very similar to a way that a company might map out their plan of profitability. Profitability and making money comes a bit later. They're first focused on building an infrastructure and getting systems in place. Secondly, when it comes to brand deals and sponsorships, I can tell you that most brands and agencies that, that offer really lucrative deals don't usually consider partnering with accounts that have less than 100,000 followers. And this is because 100,000 followers can easily be from one viral runaway video that burned like wildfire for a few days and built an audience overnight. The issue is that those accounts usually plateau really quickly and they don't 
typically have long-term potential customers that a brand might want to leverage. So usually profiles that have amassed 250,000 followers or 500,000 followers, they've had time to mature, they have established a core fan base, and probably by this point likely have somewhat repeatable success with ideas, and that is what appeals to a brand, and that is something that a company can leverage. And then third, TikTok themselves actually don't allow you to sign up to most of their monetization platforms until you've reached at least 100,000 followers. And we're going to talk about those platforms here in just a minute. So to recap, just remember, this is going to be important for later. Direct monetization is when you create a branded offer that you sell directly to your audience. Indirect monetization is where you're paid by a third party to promote or integrate a product. There's actually a bunch of non-conventional ways to monetize that don't fall into these two categories that we'll talk about a little bit later, so stay tuned for that. All right, we're gonna transition now into talking about TikTok's internal monetization platform. And at the current time, TikTok has five of these that we're gonna break down. First, we have TikTok's Creator Fund. I'm sure most of you have heard of the Creator Fund. This is the platform that TikTok introduced in July of 2020, where creators get paid per views on their videos. Now, the inherent problem with the Creator Fund was just that. It was a fund. It was a set amount of revenue, $200 million, that was to be distributed between whoever joined the Creator Fund program. And as more creators joined, the more that $200 million became diluted across more and more people into the point where creators make very little now. Currently, payouts range between $0.01 cent to $0.13 cents per every thousand video views. Just to give you an example of what kind of earnings can be expected, Here's an account on TikTok, Kenya Kelly, who is in a really solid niche on TikTok, fantastic profile. And she has made $123 in the last month with close to a million views combined across all of her videos. I do know some creators that are outliers and have made over $10,000 a month through the Creator Fund. Good Vibes Vinny on TikTok was a creator that I consulted with a while back. And he was posting 15 to 20 meme review videos per day, most of these pulling a million views or greater. So obviously something like that isn't sustainable at scale for most of us, but there are some anomalies who have really leverage the creator fund to make good revenue. Really, unless you're a top tier creator on TikTok, pulling in over at least a million views per video, the fund isn't worth it in my opinion, but it is an option on the monetization table and usually has little effect on views if you really care about maybe that extra $100 a month. Although I will say some have noticed a view deficit as soon as they've joined, so keep that in mind. If you decide to join, you will need to meet certain requirements as outlined by TikTok here. These will also be linked down below in case TikTok updates them, which they frequently do. Next, we have TikTok's creator marketplace which is often abbreviated TTCM. This is a platform where creators can connect with brands on TikTok. One of the benefits of the creator marketplace is that it does give you access to additional analytics that can give you insights into your account's health. You can see things like how many active followers you have compared to those that aren't incentivized to engage with your content. If you want to sign up to the creator marketplace, you have to do this through your TikTok settings on mobile. You go to your settings, click on creator marketplace, and your account is listed on the platform and supposedly, allegedly, brands are supposed to come knocking at your door. The problem is that most of the good brands out there that really offer lucrative brand deals or sponsorship opportunities, they're not shopping around on TikTok's creator marketplace. And thus, nine out of 10 uh, opportunities that come your way through the creator marketplace are garbage and most of them are time wasters. But every once in a while, there is a golden goose of an opportunity that comes to creators and it makes wading through the weeds worth it. So just to give you a snapshot of what kind of deals the marketplace has actually brought creators, the Demi family on TikTok landed a few $500 per video offers with 700,000 followers. Charlie Siragusa landed a $200 deal with 52,000 followers on TikTok. And a good friend of mine, Carmen from Top Flight Family, landed a $30,000 deal through the marketplace. From basically everyone that I've spoken to who has successfully landed a deal because of the marketplace, how the process works is do you initially get connected with the brand on the marketplace and then you both proceed to just take it off outside of the platform. I'm going to leave a few blogs in the description down below from creators who have detailed their various creator marketplace experiences if you want to read through an entire article on, on what this process is like. But in my opinion, there are just much better options for landing brand deals and sponsorships that don't involve leveraging the creator marketplace and we're going to segue into those options a little bit later. Next, we have the TikTok Creative Exchange, TTCX. The Creative Exchange is kind of talked about as the Creator Marketplace 2.0 because the idea of it is actually very similar. It's basically an all-in-one platform that allows brands to produce videos 
in collaboration with TikTok creators who are known as the creative providers. Brands basically will send you a message. You both can discuss the video concepts. They can approve the concept. You upload the final video and you receive payment all with inside the creative exchange platform. Basically, it's like a traditional brand deal, except TikTok has tried to fast track the entire process by building out a one-stop shop for everything. Now, unlike the creator marketplace with the creative exchange, it is up to the brand to reach out to you. You can actually sign up to join the creative of exchange as a creator. What this is going to look like is basically a notification like this that a brand is going to send you on TikTok. You have the option to accept a deal and there you'll be invited to join a creative exchange dashboard with that particular brand. It's pretty simple. I will say this is a platform that TikTok just introduced in February of 2022. So there's not a whole lot of success stories that have surfaced. Uh, although I do recommend, again, spearheading brand deals yourself outside of TikTok. And we're going to get to that in depth a little bit later. Next, number four, we have the TikTok shop. The TikTok shop is a relatively new platform as well, and it's focused on helping creators promote products in their videos and specifically with live streams. If you get access to the TikTok shop, and if you want to see an example on TikTok, check out the profile Richard Sales Official. You are also going to have the ability to include the shop showcase menu on your profile where your followers can check out the products that you're promoting in your videos. So Richard, for example, gets a commission based on any purchase made through TikTok. And any brand that you work with, they have the option to create what are called open plans, which are basically custom affiliate offers for creators that they choose to partner with. This is very similar to the Creative Exchange where you're gonna be invited by a brand to be an ambassador for their products. This is all gonna be facilitated through the TikTok notification stream. Once you have permission to sell a product, you can add it to your videos as an actual link and you can also include it as a product in your shop showcase like we just talked about. This makes purchasing on TikTok really, really frictionless for any audience member. For reference, in case you're wondering, I have spoken with a few creators who have been involved in various TikTok shop offers, and most of these creators are generating between $1,500 to $3,500 per month. Granted, they have over a million followers, so that's kind of a frame for reference for what's possible. Now, currently, the TikTok shop is actually only available in the UK and some Eastern European countries, but TikTok does have plans to expand to the US. They've mentioned this on LinkedIn. And depending on when you're watching this video, that may actually already be the case. So check the links down below for any relevant updates. All right, the fifth avenue TikTok gives us internally for monetization is through TikTok donations, gifts, and tips. Now, TikTok donations can be given to creators. They can also be from others as well. And you can receive these on your profile in the tip section. You can receive them in live streams or on individual videos if you have the video tips enabled for your profile. Usually tips or gifts are given using TikTok's sticker currency system. Gifts and tips are a bit harder to rely on as a source of revenue simply because fundamentally it's a donation. You don't want to be begging for charity at every waking opportunity. But there are some things that you can do to incentivize your audience to open their wallets to you. For example, you can offer a shout out to the person who is a top gifter on a live stream. You can provide a real-time live review, or if you're a knowledge creator, maybe you provide a brief consultation for whoever tips on a live stream or in a video. You could create a tiered reward system. This is very commonly done on TikTok, where based on certain gift amounts, there are rewards for creators. So maybe whoever tips over $20, you read off a list of anyone who tips $20 every single time you start a live session, for example. You can also give tip amounts weight in making decisions in a live stream or in future video uploads where someone who tips $50 maybe is able to make a choice about what goes into the next piece of content for tomorrow. A lot of creators on TikTok that are successfully leveraging profile tips and live tips are using them as a ticket for their audience to somehow affect their environment, whether it is pain inflicted upon themselves, which converts really, really well. People internally want to see you suffer on camera. And I hate to sound so cynical, but it is truly one of the best converting ways for donations that I've seen on TikTok. And just giving your audience a way to creatively contribute to your environment, whether it's a video or a live stream. All right, so we've had some time to explore all the various different monetization platforms that TikTok offers us and puts at our disposal. I want to talk a little bit now about something different, and that is determining your MVO. Your MVO is an acronym for your minimum viable offer. 
And in very simple terms, this is something small of value that you are offering directly to your audience. And if you remember back to something we talked about in the beginning of this course, this is a form of direct monetization. I actually want to share with you a very important statistic that we've been able to find out recently. So our company, Ace Media, did a few polls on Discord and Instagram a couple months back, and we asked over 430 different TikTok creators, on average, what was the amount of money they were willing to spend or have they spent on TikTok? What the average amount of money that they were willing to open their wallets for? And the answer, on average, was $34, or roughly 27 pounds. So what we found really over this past year is that offers that tend to sell in really high volume on TikTok are usually structured around that $34 price point. So keep that in mind. This is going to be important for later. But to get back on track, talking about your MVO, your minimum viable offer can really be split into three different sections. You don't have to engage in all three of these, but you should be considering taking action on at least one. And those three are your ISPs. That is not an acronym for internet service provider. These are your interactions, your service or your product. So let's start with unpacking interaction. Can you monetize? Is there a way that you can monetize an interaction with your fans? Because let's think about this strategically. If people follow you, chances are your audience probably enjoys what you do, right? They're keeping tabs on you for a reason. And there's probably a small percentage of them that are diehard supporters that are willing and wanting to interact with you on a higher or personal level. This is where platforms like Cameo, PearPop, or Stan are great platforms to leverage. Cameo is a platform that allows you to sell shout outs directly to your fan base. You can provide a birthday greeting or an inspirational message. PearPop is a similar platform that allows you to sell duets and comments specifically for TikTok. And Stan is an all-in-one creator store that basically acts as a link in your bio where you can offer personalized video requests, messages, ask me anything, or some form of a video message to your fan base. Now, I will say that those creators who are able to really succeed and make a killing on these platforms with video interactions are those that are able to develop what we call a talent wrapper. You can't just list yourself on these sites I just mentioned as an unknown personality and expect a wave of bookings to come flooding in. You need to find a very unique, creative way to wrap your personality in some kind of a talent. I'll give you a prime example of actually what I'm talking about. So this is Chris Turner. He's a TikTok freestyle rapper making an absolute killing because he wraps all of his interactions and messages with his fans. And he has a very distinct, creative way of packaging his interactions with his fans. That talent rapper, pun intended, is the fact that he is wrapping his messages. Now, you don't just necessarily have to leverage these third party apps to find a way to offer an interaction to your fan base. There are actually a myriad of other methods that are increasing in popularity. Uh, specifically amongst personalities on TikTok. For example, I've seen creators offer Zoom meet and greets. They create virtual photo opportunities. They offer exclusive live events. A great example is the magician on TikTok, Ben Hanlon, who created a, a virtual magic show, which he titled Shazoom. Now, if you are planning on hosting some kind of a live event or perhaps a workshop, one thing we encourage a lot of our students to do is to upload what we call maintenance videos to generate interest or to create hype for these community events that you're planning on hosting. And the way that you would engage in creating maintenance videos is you wanna make sure that you post these after you've had a breakthrough video or a video that maybe has exceeded the average performance of your content. For example, if you have a video that, let's just say eclipses a million views and you have an upcoming event that you wanna generate interest for, you might post a video that is not intended to go viral, but is just there to announce the event after you have all this influx of attention from the video that did really well. You don't wanna post these maintenance videos or these survey videos as they're often unofficially known as right after you've had a string of videos that just did not do well because TikTok is heavily based on momentum. And as we know, the accounts that plateau are the accounts that gradually just have a, a lower stepping ladder of videos. And you don't want this to be the anchor that, that ends up potentially putting your account in a bit of a pigeonhole situation or a plateau. And the last thing I want to mention in this interaction section of crafting and determining your MVO is a lot of creators often offer engagement actions like comments, DM replies, and follows. They're also monetizable interactions as well. And you can offer these with PearPop. You can also list these as a digital good or digital service that you sell to your audience with a creator store like Stan, for example. 
All right, next, I would be thinking about your service. This is the S in ISP. Is there a valuable service that you can offer directly to your audience? Now, when it comes to knowledge creators on TikTok, consulting is pretty much the classic go-to form of offering a service. I did this all of last year. I booked over a thousand consulting calls and no, that's not hyperbole or an exaggeration. It was a thousand. You have to watch the video I mentioned earlier for all the details and how truly exhaustive of a process that was. They don't recommend it. But if you have some form of expertise, if you've been doing something for a long time, you have craftsmanship, you have shortcuts, you know something that most newbies don't that people would be willing to learn about by booking a time with you. If you're into gaming, for example, you can offer gamering tutoring services. Or if you're a knowledge creator and you output educational content, why not offer a time for your audience to book a 30 minute session with you. Now your service doesn't necessarily have to just be a one on one. It could also be something that is perhaps rooted in your creative abilities or it could be a creative service. So for example, creators like uh, Ben's Ballad on TikTok, who is a creator who specializes in name and signature art. He offers this as a service in his bio. I actually just ordered one yesterday. There are a bunch of other services we're going to get to here in just a second, but I want to segue into a point that I feel that is worth mentioning right now. If you are planning on mentioning or alluding to your services in your content, you never want a dedicated video solely to do that. There's a bunch of crafty ways that you can integrate awareness for your service in your content that I want to introduce you to. But there's fundamentally an overarching concept that you should use almost as the figurative pair of glasses for creating this content through. And it's a concept that we teach in our TikTok Creator Pro community that I've coined the invitation to the party approach. If you are an educator or a coach on TikTok, let's just say, the goal of a lot of your content should be to give people valuable information, but also fundamentally a taste of what you can help them with. That is the invitation. The party, so to speak, is where they are are given full access to either you or your services, where your wealth of knowledge and power is unleashed to assist them at the maximum potential. Now, what this might look like integrated into your content is something like this. Maybe you say something along the lines of, oh, in a consultation session yesterday, we were talking about how to save massive amounts of money while traveling internationally. And maybe in the video, you proceed to share some tips on how to save money when you're in foreign countries. You're delivering value. There's practical advice that you're sharing and delivering to your audience, but you're also elegantly hinting at your offer. The fact that you offer consultations, you had one yesterday and you had someone who was willing to pay you for your time and book a session with you, right? The invitation to the party. It's very subtle. If you actually rewind a minute ago, you'll notice that I did this myself and use the same strategy. Hopefully that idea was somewhat clear. Let's talk about group coaching. Group coaching is another highly popular service to offer when it comes to knowledge creators specifically. If you don't have time to be taking four to five different individual consulting calls like I did for most of last year, there are definitely other ways to service others. If you have 65,000 active followers, let's just say, and the word active is key because you should never take your vanity metric of a follower count at face value because a lot of profiles that have been on TikTok for a few years, let's just say, have a lot of ghost followers, inactive audiences that followed them for some random video that is no longer representative of what the creator is currently building the account around. So just keep all that in perspective. But let's just say you convince 0.03% of 65,000 people to invest with you. So that would be 20 people. And let's just say your price point is $357. If you're able to sell those 20 offers, you've now created $7,000 in income. Now, of course, it has to be worth it for people. You have to somehow solve a problem that's worth spending $357 to solve. But if you're good at what you do and you're able to craft your offer well, and they feel like they've extracted a lot of value just from your free content, then there's probably a good incentive for them to invest with you at a higher level. Now, I will give you a key tip when it comes to structuring pricing. I would encourage you to use odd numbers. So there's a bunch of market research out there and, and psychology studies that are behind using odd numbers like 7, 13, and 11 when structuring pricing. For some reason, consumers just classify those numbers in particular as feeling less expensive. And we encourage a lot of our students to do this as well when crafting offers that fill really good voids for problems that exist out there in the market. And speaking of which, here's actually one of our TikTok Creator Pro students, Aaron and Sugi, who has an account focused on mobile videography tips, fantastic profile. I'll link it down below. And he's discussing on how he's recently offered a service and monetized his account. This year, January is when I started monetizing. The easiest way to monetize for me was to offer one-on-ones. So I know that's what you did initially. I didn't offer any free one-on-ones. I just offered them for like $87 for you know an hour session. And then I kept building it up to 100, 197. Now it's 297. So that 
that was the first way, but that was at about 113,000 followers. So I'm using Stan. I know you're familiar with Stan. I'm using Stan and I just listed there that I have a one-on-one. And then while I was running the one-on-ones, I had like so many bookings coming in in two, three weeks time that literally I made like $2,000 just with an 87 hourly rate in like two weeks. I had so many coming in and then I started increasing the price. Then I launched my mentorship program because I had so many people coming in a one-on-one. I said, okay, why don't I just run a six-week program, run a mentorship program and allow 12 students. And then that brought in a nice large sum of money within a day or two, of course, that was then a six week of work, which I had I had one of those pass and I'm in the second one now, but I increased the price and I reduced the number of people. So I've gone from 12 to eight people now, but increased the price and probably I'm going to skip the next one. And then I'm going to go with four students, even higher price. One of the ways that I recommend introducing your service beyond just mentioning it in videos with the invitation to a party approach, like we mentioned earlier, is to create what is called a lead magnet. A lead magnet is basically a free resource. Source. It can be a PDF, a mini course, a cheat sheet, an article, or some other digital good that helps your audience in solving a problem that you know that they deal with. And I'm going to say something that's potentially a bit of a hot take, and that is to not hold back from giving the very best that you can when building out your lead magnet. There's this tendency in the online educational sphere to feel like if you give away too many gold nuggets, people aren't going to want to know what's inside the treasure chest, which might be your paid offer or your paid service. And my response to that is, listen, you are always going to be of more value than something that you create. Also, you can't share everything that you know in a single free resource. You have the firsthand experience of solving and working with potentially hundreds of people that deal with a problem that you specialize in solving. And you know what works and what doesn't for specific situations. Also, I just think that we as humans can subconsciously read each other's intentions. If you lead with some of your best up front when building a lead magnet, for example, People will notice and observe your genuine interest and desire in wanting to see them succeed. And there will be no shortage of people willing to seek you out on a higher level and pay you for whatever service you have to offer. I tell you, I speak from experience on that one. I've just found that to be the case. If you don't have a lead magnet, one of the action items that we encourage creators to do is to output what we call a survey series on TikTok, which isn't necessarily intended to go viral, but it's a bunch of videos that are intended to dig deeper into your audience's problems if you're not already familiar with what they are. For example, maybe throughout three or four videos, you might ask your audience what the most pressing problem is about house organization, if that's something that you feel like you have some know-how in. Maybe you're inherently a very tidy person. In these videos, you would be asking, what would they like from you? What are the biggest tips that they have found in organizing their kitchen or their bedroom or their living room? This kind of market research is going to give you a bunch of core problems that you can now focus your attention on developing a solution for with that lead magnet. And again, this can be a PDF, it can be a cheat sheet, it can be a mini course on how to tidy up the kitchen, for example. If it's a PDF, if it's a newsletter, if it's a mini course from there, you are then going to introduce your coaching or your service as the next step. Again, this is basically just the reiteration of the invitation to the party approach that we just talked about earlier. You're saying to your audience, here's something of high value that's free. Check it out. If you find it valuable, here's the next paid step. Make sense? Cool. Let's talk about your product now. Is there a digital or a physical product that you can offer to your audience? Preferably something with a low barrier of entry in terms of pricing. I'll actually give you a good example of what a digital product might look like. A friend of mine, Antonio, from the account Invest Starters on TikTok, fantastic profile in real estate investing. He created a real estate market calculator that he would sell to his audience as a way to help them fast track any real estate market projections and calculations. One of the first considerations that you want to have, especially if you're an entertainment or a personality forward profile on TikTok, is to think about if there is a way that you can come up with something that can tangibly represent the core concepts in your videos. For example, I don't know if a lot of you are familiar with the company U2s. What they basically do is they take internet moments and personalities like Mr. Beast or PewDiePie and they turn them into collectible figures. That's basically the idea of something that tangibly represents someone or something that you might watch. It's the same idea. I'll give you another example. Maybe this will be a bit of a better one. One of the longtime creators that I've been working with is Ben Hanlon. He's an incredible magician and personality from the UK. 
And we were recently talking about monetization and discussing ways that he can sell something related to his Rubik's Cube art videos on TikTok, which tend to pull in millions of views. Some of the ideas that we talked about and were considering were to either create a life-size poster of the Rubik's Cube mosaic art that people could order or to even create a miniature version of this mosaic of Rubik's Cubes that was made up of mini Rubik's Cubes. And it was a way for the audience to tangibly participate in the concepts that made his videos extremely viral on TikTok. Again, that is the idea. It tangibly represents or gives your audience a way to tangibly participate in the actual content. And preferably, you want to craft something around that $34 price point like we talked about earlier. One of the other most common products to sell is apparel or merchandise. And Merchandise, admittedly, is a hard one to sell. It's not easy to convince someone to be a walking billboard for you. There absolutely needs to be clarity around what ideas your apparel is supposed to represent or your handbags or your mugs or your hats. One of the concepts that we often work with personality creators to integrate into their videos, knowing that they want to eventually sell merch later on down the line, is something that we call the creative hallmark, which in very simple terms is something unique that is intentionally integrated into your content with the purpose of eventually using that as a way to personally brand some sort of apparel or merchandise later on down the road. You don't have to overthink this either. Basically, the simplest way to think about it is that it's an inside joke with your audience. It can be, let's just say, a verbal exclamation or a phrase like boomda, for example, or we We've even had gamers dress up in crocodile costumes knowing that they were going to sell eventually crocodile themed merchandise. Really the entire idea behind this creative hallmark is twofold. Number one, it's to plant seeds of memorability in the minds of your audience such that they remember you and recognize you. And number two, it's to give them something that they can visualize, something that you could potentially put on a t-shirt or put on the front face of a trucker hat. You really have to be thinking ahead with a lot of these things, especially if you want to eventually pull the trigger on launching some kind of merchandise dice line because I do see a lot of creators who come up with truly interesting designs from scratch but when they announce that their merch store is open for business they just don't move inventory because what they're putting on a t-shirt or what they're selling it doesn't mean much to people and fundamentally they don't recognize whatever is there on the t-shirt. Merchandise really is there to enhance the connection, the achievements, the inside jokes that you've already established with your audience and in case any of you are wondering maybe you're looking to get involved with merchandise if you feel like you've already already established those prerequisites. The two most commonly used print-on-demand services used with TikTok are Teespring and Printify. And there's also a few others that I'll be linking down below in the description. Another great product on TikTok that I think is extremely underrated is to create a form of gated content. This is basically any kind of exclusive content, maybe the behind the scenes of what you do, something that you can put behind a paywall. And I think this particular avenue is massively undervalued because I don't think creators truly realize how much interest there is in the actual craftsmanship of what they do. If you do, I don't know, TikTok mini documentaries, why not do an editing behind the scenes? Or if you do some sort of virtual environment design or you know, like CGI, why not do a start to finish walkthrough about how you built out the environment or built this 3D model that went viral on TikTok? A lot of photographers on TikTok have the option to sell things like photo lots or presets to help with a more frictionless video editing process. Here's actually one of our TikTok Creator Pro students, Aaron Sugi, who we just heard from a few minutes ago, talking about how he's developed gated content and currently sells presets to help with mobile video editing. So my thing on TikTok is everything is done on a phone. I also uh, offer the, the follow button animation I have at the end of my videos. It was $10 initially. But once I had so many offers coming in and, you know, I was uh, valuing my time. Now I raised it to $20, but still I have the occasional um, requests coming in. People uh, can click on the link and then I've got like follow button animation. They click on it and a little description of what's included in this little package. They uh, purchase and then I get a notification in the stand store and then some and then it just says, OK, Steve ordered a follow button. You've got five days to complete it. And I just complete it, send it back, tick the box. So it's completed. So all of this to say, again, people, your audience, chances are, are willing to pay you for the design process of your creations. This can be, again, a video tutorial. It can be a template, a shortcut, something like a preset that is there to help them have a more frictionless creative process or just give more knowledge into how you're able to create what you're able to showcase on TikTok. If you're wondering where or how to host gated content to your audience, there are a couple of platforms that are good options. You could use Patreon. You could use Buy Me a Coffee. Teachable is another good option. Stan is one I recommend. Create a Stan store in your link in bio 
or this is kind of a janky version, but I have seen people do this where they will private a video on TikTok. Maybe it's a video tutorial, a behind the scenes, and they'll have people message them for the access link and they'll just send them the link and maybe their audience tips them an access fee of $1,500 via the tips feature on TikTok. All right, before we get to the next section and we start talking about navigating the landscape of brand deals and winning those battles, I want to answer a question a lot of you are probably asking, and that is, Joseph, how do I give my audience access to any of my MVOs? Well, I would like to introduce you to today's sponsor, Stan. Stan is a platform I've mentioned several times in this video so far, and they describe themselves as an all-in-one creator store. Stan allows you to basically create a one-stop shop for your followers to visit. They click your Stan link, there they can purchase any digital products, any MVOs you have to offer. They can book a time on your calendar, they can click your affiliate links, and we'll talk about affiliates a little bit later in this course. They can sign up to your email list all within Stan. The entire interface of Stan is completely customizable. They have a really intuitive drag and drop builder that you can use to create a Stan store in less than five minutes. And rather than paying over $100 for a dozen different subscriptions to an email builder, a link tree, a calendar tool, a funnel builder, whatever else you need, Stan offers all of it for $29 a month. I actually happen to know the founder of Stan personally, and I can tell you that one of the things that John and his team have focused on optimizing Stan for is creating a frictionless one-tap checkout experience that has your sales copy, your promo videos, and testimonials all in one place. There's a link that Stan provided that is going to be in the description of this video that you can click to get started in setting up your very own Stan store. All right, this next section of this course is gonna focus on brand deals and licensing rights. Let's go ahead and jump right into the first slide here. And I wanna mention as well, kind of as a prerequisite, I'm, I'm not gonna sugarcoat things and say that brand deals are not profitable. The creators on TikTok, the top tier names that are raking in millions of dollars per year, and there are a lot of them, 90% of that comes from brand deals and partnerships. I realize that terms like brand deals and sponsorships are kind of taboo at times because everyone talks about them, but I hopefully want to give you a new way of approaching these and give you the tools and the steps and the frameworks for hopefully landing your first or continuing to land more if you already have a few of these under your belt. All right, let's go ahead and talk about product integration. Now, if you remember back from earlier when we talked about direct or indirect monetization, product integrations, brand deals, licensing rights is a form of indirect monetization. And a product integration is a partnership where a creator promotes a product or service in their content in exchange for payment or products from a brand. What a product integration might look like, I'll give you an example. One of our TikTok Creator Pro students, Designer Tom on TikTok, fantastic profile that focuses on UI, UX design. He was able to land with 273,000 followers, two brand deals, one for $3,500, one for $6,000. And these were from two different companies who paid him to talk about them and promote their services in dedicated videos on his account. Let's talk about rates. I know a lot of you are looking for hard numbers when it comes to what you should charge for a brand that's reaching out to you. And I want to give you some guidelines here in a second, but I do want to say in general, you know your audience far better than any marketing team does. If I'm on an influencer marketing team and I look at your profile of 55,000 followers, I'm probably going to lowball you something like $200 per video after spending 30 seconds on your account. But if you know that you have a diehard engaged fan base, one that you've really established some core threads of trust with, it's up to you to communicate that to the brand and negotiate on the rate. Something like $500 might be a bit more accurate to your situation. Now, as a guideline, most brands are willing to pay ballpark between $500 to $850 per every 100,000 video views. Once again, I can't emphasize this enough. This heavily fluctuates depending on a lot of things, including your niche, your audience engagement, and your AVP or your average video performance, which usually includes your views and the average watch time that a video of yours might pull in. Now, having been involved in spearheading multiple different influencer campaigns at this point, I want to give you a few tips for maximizing your opportunities with brands. And there's some juicy information here, so you might want to write some of this down. I'll also include the slides in the description below in case I haven't mentioned that earlier. The first thing is something we kind of talked about indirectly, and that is to always, always negotiate the rates. Brands are typically going to lowball you. That is a given. And most of them, they have a set budget in mind and they want to spend as little as possible when partnering with a creator. So when negotiating, we encourage a lot of our clients to use phrases like my minimum level of engagement is $550 per video, or I'd be willing to green light this for something in the ballpark of $750. You have to let the brand know upfront what you'd be willing to consider. 
Number two, if you have a pure audience, you can charge more. A pure audience is an audience that has never been pitched to directly by you. Most creators don't realize that this is leverage. It's up to you, again, to communicate these finer details to the brand and use them as leverage when negotiating things like rates. Pure audience is highly valued because it's probably the most receptive that it's ever going to be to you promoting a product. Number three, waiting longer until welcoming sponsorships will yield better and more lucrative deals. Like we mentioned earlier, most brands and agencies that are out there hunting for influencer partners will not consider working with accounts that have less than 100,000 followers. Why is this? Well, as we mentioned earlier, this is because there are a ton of viral runaway accounts out there, accounts that add 100,000 followers overnight from one viral video. Those are not viable partners for sponsorships. Usually by something like really 500,000 followers is sort of that sweet spot, that tipping point. But even 250,000 followers, most creators at that stage, they have somewhat of a defined focus for the account. They have a mature audience and they have a content strategy down. Actually, I will mention there was a software company that I headed an influencer marketing campaign for many months ago, and we didn't even look at accounts that had less than a million followers. So there are a lot of thresholds that once you can get over that hump, they'll just be those were like those are where the real brand deals are and a lot of our students inside our private communities don't even choose to monetize for indirect monetization with brand deals specifically until they've reached that threshold of around a million next consider offering a view rollover or promotional guarantee when partnering with brands a view rollover guarantee is where you guarantee a set number of views often through multiple videos we are if the first video falls short maybe it pulls in 50,000 views, you carry over the partnership into another video until you meet the agreed upon number of views, which could be something like 100,000 or a million, depending on the size of the account. A lot of top tier accounts on TikTok will either do this or they will use TikTok's paid promotional tools to boost the views on the video and basically the promotion of the content. So they'll post a video and they'll boost it through paid media boosting until it reaches maybe something like 10 million views because there's just no way a promotion or an ad is going that viral organically. And you see a lot of those promoted videos on massive accounts. I know a lot of creators that have over 5 million followers that pretty much just rely on promotional guarantees when working with brands. Just make sure that you're very clear when you're partnering, are you using any sort of paid media boosting or are you doing the promotion, the product integration, just organically through multiple videos if necessary. Next, make sure both parties have clarity on things like deadlines and exclusivity. Is there a certain time you need to publish things by? What is the cutoff for when you need to have the video posted on the account? I've worked with some creators who have partnered with brands where they have added what they call a rush fee, where the brand wanted them to post a video by Father's Day and Father's Day was six days away. When it comes to things like exclusivity, are you able to work with other brands? Can you even consider partnering with similar companies in the near future. There are some brands out there that will not allow you to partner with any similar companies up to six months after ending your partnership with them. So make sure you're aware of any of those conditions. Finally, try and negotiate for multiple video packages or cross-platform deals. Ultimately, you want to reduce what is known as your turnover rate, which is how many different brands and sponsors you're partnering with. If you're constantly trying to hustle for new sponsorships, it puts a lot of stress on the creator and their audience. Instead of working with a new brand one week, and an entirely different brand the next, it'll be much easier on your audience if you partner with a brand over multiple videos. You'll also likely have a crossover with your audience across multiple platforms like Instagram, YouTube, maybe Twitch as well. So if a brand is open to it, introduce the idea of also promoting their product to your audiences on YouTube Shorts or Instagram Reels or TikTok Stories as well. There are a lot of creators that are starting to throw in a story shout out as a bonus in a partnership package because of the fact that there's just a lot of relative new attention focused on TikTok stories. Now, with all of this, you may be asking, but Joseph, I want to work with my first brand. How do I even begin to partner with one? Well, if there are no opportunities in your inboxes so far, I would actually highly suggest reaching out to the brand yourself. Let me tell you something about the current state of TikTok. It is still an incredibly new frontier for most brands. And if we had more time in this course, I could give you well over a dozen examples of creators I've connected with who have taken the initiative and talked about a brand in their video on TikTok, only to soon have that brand reach out, slide into their DMs and offer to pay for a promotion. I spoke with one of the social media managers for Bumble some time ago, and this was exactly their entry point for getting involved with TikTok. There was a lot of UGC, user-generated content about them, pulling in millions and millions of views organically, and they felt like they needed to cement their presence on TikTok and actually sponsor some of these creators.
creators. One of my previous consulting students for TikTok and a really good friend, AJ Joyner, who runs the account, got that pressure on TikTok, was actually at one point pitched a $30,000 plus brand deal from a pressure washing manufacturing company simply because AJ himself took the initiative, started networking and reaching out to relevant people in his pressure washing industry after he'd already built up a solid fan base of around a million followers on TikTok. Now, he didn't end up taking the offer because of an exclusivity condition, meaning that AJ had to forego future brand opportunities if he agreed to the deal. But opportunities like this exist and they surface and they manifest because creators themselves are willing to take action and reach out to some of these companies. So speaking of reaching out, let me give you a few tips on communicating and reaching out to brands in particular. The first thing I want to share is to always head your subject lines with your best numbers. Marketing teams, they thrive on data and numbers. That is their lifeblood. So if you reach out, I like to use subject lines like 30 million views on TikTok or at Gymshark, TikTok video, Joseph Todd times Nike, TikTok collab. These, these are these are examples. I would not use words like sponsorship, brand deals, or inquiry, as I've been told many marketing teams actually internally filter those keywords and those kinds of emails go directly to spam. Number two, limit your outreach message to three to five sentences. I might say something along, along the lines of what I have written here in gray. I'm not going to read this out, but this is a sample message. So please tweak it to your situation and make sure that it is representative of what you are attempting to get across, but it should not be longer than this. Next, you're going to want to create a press kit for your TikTok account. This is often also referred to as your media kit. And what is a press kit or a media kit? It's basically very simply put a movie trailer for yourself. It is usually a single page document or a series of pages. It is meant to give brands a very digestible single overview snapshot of what you have to offer and what you've been able to achieve on your social media platforms. So a typical press kit will outline things like your best performing content, your audience's interests, their demographics, their ages, if you know that information, your video engagement rates. There is a tool out there that helps you calculate all of this. It's called Media Kits. And to be clear, I'm not sponsored by them. I just genuinely believe that they're the best out there and they're fairly inexpensive. They also have a, a free package as well that gives you a lot of basic information. And what's nice about Media Kits is that they dynamically update your numbers. So if your numbers change, maybe your follower count increases, you don't have to completely overhaul this yourself. Media Kits updates all of this automatically. I'll leave a link for Media Kits down below to use when you start to create your press kit. But in general, having a press kit, whether you create it yourself or you use an automated system for it. It's absolutely crucial to have if you plan on pursuing reaching out to companies yourself. One quick tip as well to add to your press kit is that it's very helpful to outline different packages that you offer for promotions. This is something we encourage a lot of our clients to do to offer something like a silver, gold, or platinum partnership in case one of your offers maybe is beyond a brand's budget. So a press kit can outline all of this very clearly. And in the description below this video, there will be some examples of successful press kits that you can use for reference. The last thing I want to mention before we move on here is that if you're planning on reaching out to a brand yourself, reach out on LinkedIn first before you start tackling email inboxes and sliding into a brand's DMs. If you're not on LinkedIn, I'm here to tell you that that's where a lot of brand deals are talked about and drafted in the TikTok creator economy. And it's actually fairly easy to get in contact with specific team members from most companies. And since the vast majority of TikTok creators are not on LinkedIn whatsoever, if you're serious about pursuing brand opportunities, then there's definitely an early advantage that you have here. And I'm going to leave my profile linked down below. So shoot me a connection request while you're over there. Drop me a message and I'll throw a couple more tips your way about successfully reaching out to a company on LinkedIn. Let's talk for a second about how to actually incorporate a product into your content, because there are a couple of golden rules that you always want to make sure you follow. And there's some pretty big landmines that you want to avoid. But before we get to that, I would like to introduce the second sponsor of today's video, which is One Degree's Organic Sprouted Rolled Oats. <laughs> I'm sorry, I can't say that with a straight face. I just broke rule number one, which is always make sure that the product or service is relevant to your content and is something that you would utilize yourself. All it takes, and I've seen this on TikTok, is one disingenuous promotion and you get a score of unfollows, which can plateau your account. If you're established in a specific niche where your account has a focus with its content, you want to make sure that you partner with a brand that you trust and a brand that has a product that makes sense to pitch to your audience. There's a reason why I didn't accept a sponsor to pitch oats in a TikTok video. And believe me, there are food companies that reach out in my inbox. Next, you want to make sure that you as the creator have clear creative control over the product integration process. The biggest mistake that a brand can make is not giving the creator creative license to integrate a product into their content in the way that the creator sees fit. 
I've seen many an account on TikTok completely decimated because they pitched something like vehicle tires in a TV ad format on a motivational quotes page because that's what the brand requested and the rate was just too good for the creator to pass up. That's a real example, by the way. So if a brand does not give you flexibility to craft a idea for pitching a product in your style or one that's comfortable to your audience, run for the hills. Your audience is your biggest asset and you truly don't want to lose the backbone of your account or your business because your content now feels like an ad. All right, next, having specificity within a niche is a superpower. You'd be surprised to learn how little follower count matters when it comes to accounts that have a very niche defined specific focus. A lot of brands actually prefer to partner with what are called micro influencers. Micro influencers on TikTok are are accounts that range between 10,000 to 50,000 followers and have a very defined focus. So maybe it's an account that talks about something like child care for new mothers, for example. And accounts that have a very defined focus can often charge double to triple the rates of some larger accounts that are much more broader in focus and maybe are a bit more personality forward. Moving on, create original content around the product or service. This one's kind of a given, but I do want to emphasize you should never be creating a sponsored video just to get it out of the way. Like we discussed earlier, your audience isn't stupid. They can subconsciously read intentions and they know when you're not fully invested in your craft. I've been asked before who I think are the most successful examples of accounts on TikTok that have monetized. And my answer is actually not based on how much money they're bringing in, but rather how subtle and undetectable their product integrations are. There are a ton of accounts out there that make a lot of money up front, but they lose respect from their audience fairly quickly. Every competitive market has those money grifters. You know who they are. If you can't find a way to creatively integrate a product, you probably shouldn't be partnered with that company in the first place. As a last resort, you could always do something like, let's just say you are a cooking recipe based account and you create a video that talks about your favorite Indonesian spices and you tack on a sponsored curry spice at the very end and you say something like, this video happens to be sponsored by Kirkland's line of Indonesian spices. But an idea like that, a listicle style video, I give it a C plus. It's not super creative, but it's always a last resort. Finally, on one last note on the topic of brand deals, I do want to mention that you have the legal obligation to disclose that you're making money by recommending something. If not, you're breaking FTC guidelines in the US and similar laws apply to most countries as well. Usually you can verbally disclose the promotion or you can use the hashtag ad, hashtag sponsored hashtags in the first line in the description, or you can even use TikTok's branded content disclosure label, which you have the option to include right when you're about to post a video. All right, next we're gonna talk about community commerce and lives. Community commerce, by the way, is just TikTok's fancy way of referring to creators who drive sales for products specifically through live streams. And I'm gonna share a very powerful piece of knowledge with you, and that is that truly there is no better place on TikTok to drive conversions through than on a live stream. Why is that? Well, live streams are where you get to showcase the real life version of you, the unfiltered version of you. People can see for themselves the wealth of knowledge that you have to offer that's not constricted and constrained to a 60 second video mold. And you get to showcase what you have to offer your audience in much more detail, whether it's a service, a product, or a personality. If you're a coach or a knowledge creator, an educator on TikTok, the live streams are where you're gonna wanna cultivate the majority of interest for your offer, just plain and simple. I will mention as well, this is gonna sound beyond belief, but I know creators on TikTok in certain spaces like the finance niche, for example, that are getting paid by brands over $10,000 plus per live stream because the live streams just convert so incredibly well for the company that they've partnered with. All right, what are some ways that you can take advantage of community commerce when it comes to brand deals? Well, the first way you can participate is to propose a trial sponsored stream with a brand. This is a great idea for anyone who's getting wanting to get involved in promoting any sort of physical products. And to talk about this more, here's actually a friend of mine, Will, from the account Money Man Myers, who's gonna share his experience working with brand deals and leveraging live streams. Just recently, I started doing uh, brand deals and selling the skill of generating leads, taking people from TikTok Live, generating leads, and getting those leads to somebody else, giving them a call to action to somebody else. And um, I'm selling between like just over 10 grand per one hour live. I had a bunch of brands that reached out to me and they were like, you know, random stuff, like a flying helicopter for your kids or like something, some random like cheap gadget. And I never did those deals because they never really made sense for the type of content that I do, which is finance and money. And then I finally had a brand that reached out to me that uh, does taxes and tax planning. And I have an entire live dedicated where I just teach tax planning 
And I would drive them to some of my offers, some of my free text newsletters, stuff like that. And so the overlap on my content made perfect sense for that brand. Thinking from that perspective for me, I can have a sponsorship on the brand sponsorship on the content that I teach. I can have a brand sponsorship on like for this, like if we're drinking during the live, drinking like energy drink, coffee, I can have a coffee brand sponsor. I have an almond milk sponsor it. So like throughout the entire thing, you can have your maximum money-making philosophy of how many different streams of income can I get from one piece of content that I'm going to create. On the negotiation side, I always had in the back of my mind that once I figured out how much money I'm going to generate for them, if I can generate them, if I can send them 20 leads and they can convert 10% of those leads and each lead generates them $1,000, well, then I know I can just reverse engineer what I should charge them for an hour of time. In an hour, I can send them this many leads and if their conversion is this, and if if they're going to make $20,000, they can pay me 10. You know, it's that kind of thing. This idea that Will's talking about of actually finding a partner for your live stream is becoming more and more popular in the community commerce space on TikTok as brands start to realize the true power that live streams have when it comes to promoting a product or service. It's actually becoming quite popular on TikTok to do what are called sponsored streams where a lot of influencers, they might have like a sponsored by Coachella hashtag banner in the background of their videos and they'll spend a significant portion of their lives showcasing unique products. The beauty and cosmetics landscape is a really popular one to do this in on TikTok. One quick tip, by the way, is to try to incorporate other platforms into the same stream. And maybe you use a tool like Lula.tv, which will be linked down below, where you can stream on Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok simultaneously. Another way to participate in community commerce is to get permission to promote products through the TikTok shop. The TikTok shop, if you recall back to one of our initial sections earlier, is one of the five internal monetization platforms that TikTok offers. And the TikTok shop, once again, is where brands can list products on TikTok. They can send custom affiliate offers to creators to promote those products. And the creators can include those products on what is called the shop showcase, which is basically a catalog on their profile. And they can also include links to those products in individual videos and on live streams when they mention the products, which makes conversions very frictionless. All right, next we're going to talk about content licensing rights. Content licensing is where you're paid to give a company the rights to use your content. This can be in advertisements that they choose to run. This could be redistribution on their own channels. It's actually pretty common for creators that have really unique viral videos to get media companies requesting to buy the rights to that video to repost it on their own pages. For example, there was a woman that I connected with about a year ago who had a video eclipse, 25 million views on TikTok, and it was of her grooming her dog and the two of them having a good time. And the media page from Instagram, 9gag, with over 58 million followers, reached out and wanted to buy the rights to reshare her video. That's a pretty traditional example of what content licensing looks like. Now, for content licensing, you are going to want to read through all, and I mean all, of the terms and conditions for any contract that's thrown your way. There have been a few creators I have crossed paths with where they have unknowingly signed away not only the right to the video's distribution, but the right to remove the content from their own profile. And in one particular instance, the company ended up using the video to generate thousands thousands of dollars in sales with a product that the creator was opposed to and the creator didn't get a say in it, didn't get a penny of any of this because she signed away the right to benefit from any sort of future monetization. So there are a lot of sticky clauses that too many pass over when it comes to content licensing. Just as a quick tip, if you don't understand the terms and conditions, because legal jargon can often go over many ahead, I would recommend looking at Google or TikTok, searching a term like TikTok legal attorney and find a legal professional that you can have look over the agreement. I've actually done this on multiple occasions, and it really does help bring clarity and and peace of mind to any content licensing process. Also, if if you want to know my particular recommendation, for legal attorneys, just message me on Instagram and let me know the context and I can provide you a few recommendations. Generally speaking, it's usually not worth considering licensing out your content if you're receiving less than $300. That's just my standard. A lot of people feel like, oh, the exposure is what makes it worth it. But in reality, the amount of secondhand followers you're going to get from some random people following your username because it happens to be on a page that they follow for content is actually very minimal. Just for context, that dog lady groomer that I mentioned earlier only added about 800 followers to her TikTok account after her video was reposted by 9gag in front of nearly 60 million followers. All right, we're going to segue now into talking about how to capitalize on affiliates for TikTok. The affiliate marketing landscape is one that I think is very misunderstood and oversimplified for TikTok. It's not just about talking about a product. 
and then telling people to click a link in your bio. It's really much more than that. Affiliates or affiliate marketing, just for definition's sake, is where you promote a product to your target audience, and usually you get a kickback from sales or a small payment up front. The benefits of this kind of monetization is that there are no products that you have to worry about, and there are a lot of companies out there that actually offer a very significant percentage of sales, some even above 50%, and we'll talk about how to find these a little bit later. Now, there are really two different ways of engaging in affiliate marketing for TikTok, and this is where you really have to define whether you want to go down the active affiliates route or the passive affiliates route. Active affiliates is where you're openly promoting an offer or a series of products on your account as the primary reason behind starting the profile. So accounts like Rachel Metters are built around just featuring quirky products in every video with the goal of creating virality and interest for buying that product. And all those products are cataloged in her bio. Passive affiliates, on the other hand, are those that usually don't rely on affiliate marketing as the primary source of income. And those who engage in passive affiliates usually only feature products that they personally utilize. To give you a practical example of what passive affiliates might look like on TikTok, once again, I want to hear from Aaron Sugi, our TikTok Creator Pro student, who's going to talk about how he's built out the affiliate marketing side of his business on TikTok. I also have affiliate links for, you know, I talk about lighting equipment and phone gadgets and all that stuff. So that mm -hmm. is also listed. It just says gear I use. So here there is a stand link. You just click on the stand link. So I prioritize, like depending on what I want to push the most, that's what I have at the top. Right now, the hook template I just finished. I think it's super powerful and it's the cheapest one. And here I have the gear I use. See the gear I use? So you click on this. Mm -hmm. So here... I think it's just and each, pretty each one of these stuff. you're saying just redirects to the Amazon affiliate link, then phone yeah. gadgets. So these are account. categories. So you go phone gadget category, and then these are just here all affiliated links to uh, to Amazon. And here at the top, the 3D lighting software. It's uh, there is a 3D lighting software I use for my live master classes on TikTok, mm -hmm. which is $150 to buy, and there is a an affiliate program for that. So when people click on this, they get taken to the website where they can purchase it, and I get 20 or 30 percent so it's like 30 dollar per purchase for the uh for that let's talk about some best practices for engaging with affiliate marketing on tiktok and also some pitfalls that you want to avoid stepping into so the first one is to avoid using phrases like link in bio or check my link tree also don't use these as a hashtag and do not include them in the on-screen captions or the text bubbles that you overlay on your videos Instead, use alternate phrases like more info on my profile, check my account resources, or consider not using a call to action as arguably most viewers know where to go to find more info. Phrases like link in bio, check my link tree. We've just had too many students that have had videos taken down and TikTok has blacklisted a lot of these phrases depending on the niche. So they're usually just best avoided altogether. Next, never include a full email link or URL in the captions or the text bubbles. There are some companies out there that offer affiliate structures where you have to call in and you have to put a phone number on screen. Don't do that. Uh, TikTok thinks you're doxing. You're not even allowed to show phone numbers in videos and many videos get removed for this reason alone. Next, when finding affiliate offers to potentially promote, consider finding relevant software or mobile app deals to promote first over any physical product. This is not just because physical products often cause more hassle for both the distributor and the affiliate marketer, but because there is more viable long-term monetization streams if you're to partner with an application or a SaaS company, a software as a service company, or a mobile app company, because many of them offer lifetime reoccurring revenue where they'll give you 20 to 50% of a customer's monthly subscription until that customer cancels. For gamers especially, gosh, there are a plethora of mobile app games, mobile app companies out there that we found pay pretty handsome affiliate commissions, upwards of 60% for each customer that signs up. And again, you're getting the monthly monthly reoccurring revenue. So it's the definition of passive affiliates. Next, you want to make sure that you choose a product to affiliate for that you have what's called consumer affinity with, meaning it is something that you yourself make use of or almost something that you could see yourself featuring in a video non-promotionally. Again, we're trying to do everything that we can here to make sure that your videos are not just crafted around promoting a product because that's unnatural. And viewers, as we all know, can smell a sellout from a mile away. And there are legitimately many accounts on TikTok that meet their demise that way. Now, the best places for finding affiliate offers include Amazon Associates, ClickBank, or checking to see if a product that maybe you already make use of has an existing affiliates page on the company's website. Many of them do. And a lot of staple products that we utilize, software, applications, physical products, 
actually already have an ambassador affiliates program in place and all you have to do is sign up. Speaking of signing up, I will mention as well, we've encouraged a lot of entertainers and gamers especially to look at websites that rank the top trending apps on the Google Play Store or the App Store by week or by month and actually reach out to those companies because if they're seeing a lot of demand, a lot of them are already engaging in affiliate offers and are reaching out privately. And sometimes if you simply DM them, you can also be added to the list. The last thing I'll mention on the topic of affiliates is that in general, it's a bit different difficult to turn affiliate marketing on TikTok into a primary income source unless you're an active affiliate, like we talked about with the example of Rachel Metters. Usually affiliate marketing is best treated as a supplemental income source. And there's absolutely no reason why you can't be earning a significant chunk of change a month if you have a few hundred thousand followers. On. All right, let's talk about audio promotions. Audio promotions is an income stream that's actually rarely talked about and one that you can turn substantial profits with if you know how to position yourself properly. So audio promotions are where you're paid to utilize someone else's audio in your videos. And this was actually one of the revenue streams that I took advantage of last year. With audio promotions, I'd be lying if I didn't say that you're gonna have a bit of an uphill battle to monetize with audio promotions if you're pulling in less than 50,000 views per video. But there are a ton of platforms out there that once you meet those thresholds, they can connect you with different audio tracks that you can get paid to use in your videos. The two most commonly used platforms are Playlist Push and PearPop. For Playlist Push, you have to sign up to their influencer promotion program where you can then gain access to sounds that artists will pay you to promote. And with PearPop, we covered this a bit earlier, but it's basically a marketplace where you can list your account and offer to promote or even duet videos and use their sound for a fee. I recently spoke with Jeffrey Menson on TikTok, who runs the account Green Rabbit with over 18 million followers. It's a curation page. And he'd mentioned that PearPop is one of the platforms that he leverages to monetize his massive account with audio promotions. One of the platforms that he recommended leveraging was Fiverr. Fiverr is a freelancing platform where you can provide digital services for others. And some of the top ranking TikTok accounts that are listed on Fiverr are reaping in thousands of dollars per month just by utilizing audio in their videos. Here's an audio promotion service on Fiverr that has over 266 4.9 star reviews with a minimum package offered of $150. So doing some quick math, that's at least $40,000 generated through Fiverr. Now I do wanna add that most TikTok accounts listed on Fiverr are either very small or their listings are not high quality. So if you have a sizable TikTok account or you are just willing to put in more effort than most in making your audio promotion service look somewhat appealing, then there's definitely room for improvement and I can see this being a viable income stream for anyone looking to monetize and land deals with audio promotion. By far the very best way from what I found to land high paying audio promotions is to join exclusive Discord servers. There are quite a few of these servers out there that exist solely for the purpose of simply funneling audio promotions toward the members that join. But like I mentioned, they are very exclusive and they usually have a pretty high barrier of entry. Like you need to have either a million followers or be a mutual friend of multiple people on the server. So needless to say, networking is absolutely key to gaining access to most of these servers. This was actually my gateway to becoming part of a few of these last year, just reaching out, connecting with other similar accounts and creators, talking about monetization, exchanging value, and I got a couple of invites sent my way. All right, before we start putting together some custom monetization strategies for a few of your own accounts, I wanna talk about some non-conventional ways to monetize on TikTok. These are just miscellaneous methods of monetization that didn't really fit in any other categories. There's two of these. The first one to introduce is ad interjections. Ad interjections are portions of your video setup or filming environment that are dedicated to promotions. It's basically ad space that you intentionally create. Think of a sports stadium, for example, with all the displays and banners, you're taking the same approach for your own videos. I've seen creators that have done this that have actually auctioned away promotion space by placing something like a blank picture frame in the foreground that says advertise here or by including an Instagram handle somewhere in their video. Next, I want to touch upon account flipping. I'm going to keep this point very brief as I know most of you probably aren't actively involved in growing and selling accounts yourself, but this is a landscape that I have a ton of experience in and there are quite a few best practices that I want to share when it comes to building these accounts and eventually selling them. As I mentioned earlier, I would highly recommend watching the video in the description from last year where I actually talk about how I built a team of editors and was able to grow and flip multiple of these TikTok 
theme pages. This is something that's really hard to do yourself if you're trying to do all of this solo at scale. Number one, you wanna make sure that the account's core content is non-personalable as possible. Ultimately, you want your buyer to be able to continue in the same vein of content that built the audience in the first place. This is why compilation pages or theme accounts work really well that focus on re-editing and curating content that already exists out there, hopefully content that revolves around some sort of core theme, like this profile right here that I built last year that focused on soccer or football, depending on where you are in the world. Number two, when selling an account, your best deals are always going to come from other account owners in the same niche as you. What I would recommend that you do is reach out to similar size pages and offer to sell your account to them, help them build out their niche monopoly for whatever landscape that they create accounts in. Next, never list your account on a social media accounts marketplace. Trust me, nine out of 10 people who message you there are scammers who are going to attempt to gain your trust and then proceed to either file a dispute with PayPal or their bank after getting the account, they'll demand their money back and there's really nothing that you can do at that point, or they simply won't pay you when it comes down to it. Also, never ever use wire transfers. Whenever I would deal with a buyer, I would always use Stripe integrated payments, which has decent seller protection when it comes to selling any sort of digital good, like a social media account. Always deal over a Zoom video call and make sure that you get the buyer's personal social media accounts ahead of time, just in case if things go south, you know who's at fault. And finally, the going rate for a TikTok account is about $150 to $200 for every 10,000 followers. So for a typical 100,000 followed account, you'd be lucky if you made the sale for two grand. You're always going to get less for the account that you hoped. Keep in mind, the buyer only sees the metric at the very top of the profile. They see the vanity numbers. They don't see the effort, the blood, sweat, and tears that you put into it. If you want to know more about some of the best practices of account flipping, feel free to schedule a chat with me down below and we can chat one-on-one -on -one about some of the pitfalls to avoid and some of the finer details of this industry. But there's definitely enough here to get you started for sure. All right, now we're going to segue into some live monetization breakdowns where we'll pull up two of your own accounts and I'll suggest some recommendations for further ways that you can capitalize on the attention that you've been able to amass. I just want to say an extended thank you to everyone who submitted their profiles over on Instagram. There were over 150 of you that wanted me to take a look at your accounts. And the two that I will be looking at today are strategically chosen because I think there's a lot that they're already doing to monetize that a lot of you can learn from. And there's some ways that I think they can improve as well that are pretty universal to most people who are looking to dip their toe into the monetization waters. So the first submission we have is from Frost Ops. He has over 2.2 million followers and he uploads content that focuses on IRL tactical gaming adventures. First of all, Frost, well done with the content. Truly, the editing, the pacing, the personality, the inside jokes, the element of mystery behind who Frost is that you bring to your content, it's well thought out. And I think you have a lot of unique opportunities here to cash flow on some of this attention. And let me just give people a brief overview of sort of how you've cultivated monetization with the profile so far. I see you've cross-referenced some of your gear, where it could be found on Amazon in a few of your videos here. You've got a couple of brand deals under your belt, which I think is cool. And you've got your own merch. Well done there. The first thing that really comes to mind is if you are referencing any of the gear or anything that can be affiliated for, whether on Amazon or through any other external shops, you need to make sure that you have a clickable URL or a link that your followers can access this through because most people and we split test split tested this through multiple discord groups and then some of our private communities most users on TikTok they're not laboriously writing down names or not writing down product names or typing it into a browser the only way to take them outside of TikTok is to redirect them outside of TikTok through a link inside of TikTok if that makes sense i would also be thinking as well and i have a few ideas here for you that i brainstormed ahead of time what is an mvo a minimum viable offer that you can create a lot of what you've done with monetization, which by the way, again, I really want to commend you for, you've done a fantastic job building out the veins of content and monetization with the account so far, but a lot of it is indirect monetization. It's through a third party. And what a lot of your long-term plays are going to come through direct monetization avenues. So for example, you may consider giving your fan base a way to tangibly participate in controlling some of the actions that Frost does in his videos. I noticed, for example, one of your video ideas that tends to have a lot of high interaction is... Uh, this video right here, the choose the action style videos like this one. So if you were able to maybe create a series where the outcomes were dependent on outrageous decisions that were purchased by your followers, and then you would film those ideas, you could almost create kind of a real time funding for not every video, but maybe a series of videos. Another MVO you might consider is to offer some 
kind of pro service. I'm kind of throwing spaghetti at the wall here with this idea, but maybe it's something like private Fortnite coaching and you charge $100 an hour or something where you help gamers take an incredible parkour move that they see people do in real life and they translate that to a move that they can actually do in game. I'd really be thinking about the long term play for the account, what this account is going to help you accomplish in maybe a year from now. Maybe this is your entry point into getting involved with an esports team or building your own team of elite gamers, or maybe you're looking to take your real life Frost Ops adventures, expand to different worlds and introduce new costumes that you could potentially include the affiliate links for. I think it'd be super cool if you were able to host a real life Fortnite battle royale with other similar TikTok creators and you were able to find a flagship sponsor for the event. Something like that, I think it really put you on a new map and new level of monetization and collaboration. Still kind of thinking along the lines of an MVO that you can create for the profile I might consider coming up with some sort of mini tutorial series that is something related to gaming and preferably something that you excel at with gaming. I don't know all the nitty gritty about what you do with Twitch. Maybe you are a, an extremely like out of this world talented Fortnite player or you're great at coming up with sick burns and roasting your opponents and that like the sick burn manifesto is like a paid resource that you can create or something like that or an editing mini course. Again, I say this in all sincerity, your editing, your creativity, your your pacing is very commendable. I think behind the scenes of how you do all of this, how you do the subtitles, how you film, how you edit, how you do sound design, and you create a video that is a start to finish walkthrough of how you basically create a TikTok video. Listen, it's something I'd pay good money for. So all of this to say, I don't know if there were any good ideas here, but I would be thinking about, is there a form of direct monetization that you can create, whether it's a digital product or service, something personally branded by you that you can offer to your audience and that you can include as that very first offer when people click on your link in bio landing page. Also, since your account focuses quite heavily on your Frost Ops character interacting with some of these different gaming worlds, I would definitely keep your radar open for a potential mobile game company that has a world that you can almost insert yourself into. Um, I think an idea like that, you could play it off very subtly without having too much of a change in style. Deals like this, if you're able to find a potential mobile game partner, they they could range between $4,000 to about $7,500 easily for a single video with an account of your size. So what I might actually consider doing is going to something like the Google Play Store's newest game releases and then find a game that you like, that you feel is a viable opportunity for something that you could promote on your account. And then maybe message the developers with some of the strategies that we talked about a little bit earlier in this course. When it comes to physical products for the account, there are really two things that I would probably be aware of or just keep on your radar. Number one is you're going to want to be careful and work to reduce what is known as your brand turnover, which is how many different brands and products that you're constantly promoting. Uh, working with one flagship brand long term is going to reduce what is called the pitch stress on your audience. And it also, that's sort of indirectly the second thing I wanted to recommend is you're going to want to find a flagship physical products brand that you can work with long term that can almost be an account partner for you that has products that you like. Maybe they sell really cool tactical gear lines or they have airsoft weaponry, although you've got to be very careful with partnering with brands for the latter because TikTok is very stringent with their policing efforts on anything that looks like a weapon in their videos. But what I would probably do is find a brand that you think that has potential that preferably is not established on TikTok because if you can be one of their first partners and, and I can tell you TikTok especially for this this landscape that you're involved in the gaming this this like the cosplay space even though I know that's not your specific focus um, but but products like physical products sell extremely well so if a brand starts to see that the demand is actually there you could probably be their their leading influencer partner fairly quickly but if they're not on TikTok I would include their products in your videos to start talking about them you're not pitching them but you're showing them that the, 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 the demand exists there and you're able to get videos out there at scale that are able to pull in quite a significant amount of attention and I would just send the videos their way. Also, the last thing I want to mention, and then I promise I'll shut up after this, is I don't know how much you're engaged with making use of the live stream feature on TikTok, but TikTok recently has opened up the doors for mobile live gaming on the platform, and there's really an opportunity to potentially supplant yourself as a leading mobile live streamer if you know which games to play or you see a good opportunity. I don't know how well this might potentially plug and play into where you want to take the account long term, but if there's a game that you have interest in that can be played on mobile that you can start streaming specifically on TikTok using their new their new features. I think there's a massive opportunity there. And if you can work out a potential partnership with the game, it's a win-win. And I think you can cash flow that opportunity pretty easily. All right. Our next profile comes from Cecilla.love, who is a conscious parenting coach on 
TikTok. And it looks like Cecilia has already taken some measures to redirect attention on her profile to some of the various offers she has in her link tree. So Cecilia, first of all, I just want to say well done on the content. I probably spent the last 50 minutes consuming videos and taking some notes. And there are some recommendations I have for enhancing the monetization streams just a bit further. My first recommendation or suggestion rather would be to condense down the amount of different offers that you have in your link tree. Keep in mind, like we talked about with Frostop's profile just a few minutes ago, in many situations, audiences are spending less than 10 seconds on these linked landing pages. And you have over a dozen different redirection mediums here. So I would probably make a conscious effort to have two to three flagship offers at the very top that stand out, that maybe use colors and are those eye grabbing graphics that audiences will look at and the, where their attention is is predominantly drawn to. Now, your magic key on TikTok, especially as a coach, when it comes to driving conversions or signups to your workshops, for example, is going to be to master live streams, plain and simple. I would make a conscious effort to be engaged with these at least on a weekly basis. If you're not doing that already, maybe this is something that you're already checking the box of, but I would encourage you to make sure that you have an assigned theme for your live streams, a particular avenue of parenting or I don't know, child discipline, I'm kind of spitballing here, you know your landscape far better than I do, but it would make sure that there is a wrapper, a theme for the event, and there's a particular lead magnet that you're promoting or a workshop that you're trying to drive attention to, for example. As a knowledge creator on TikTok, someone who outputs predominantly educational focused content, it is so powerful when your audience gets to see your expertise and your know-how in raw, real time. Maybe you have a video where you interact with your children in real time, or you talk about behavior transformations. I know those topics tend to do well in your content itself. Or, and again, I'm just throwing spaghetti at the wall with this concept, but maybe you have a series where you are reacting with your audience to some of the worst parenting videos out there on the internet, and you have another screen that you're watching live with your audience, and you engage with them, and you both talk about alternative ways those parents could have handled those situations. Things like that, right, where you get to demonstrate and showcase your abilities and your recommendations to your audience. That's what, that's what drives conversions, and this is why live streams are often the main traffic funnel for coaching on the platform. Now, when it comes to crafting a minimum viable offer, an MVO specifically for TikTok, I do have a few ideas. And by the way, I'm certainly not suggesting anything that is anywhere near close to a 180 degree shift from what you've already built for monetization on TikTok. Because I do think, and I say this in all sincerity, you are checking a lot of the right boxes. But one thing I would capitalize on a little bit further is trying to monetize the demand that's clearly been shown in some of your best performing videos. One thing I did for your profile ahead of time is I filtered your videos by the most liked and most viewed just to see what concepts really broke through the surface, which by the way, there are Chrome extensions for this. One of them is sort for TikTok, which allows you to rank and, and filter based on certain metrics for your account, which is super helpful. And I will link some of these down below. But I noticed, Cicillo, for your account in particular, the role play concepts where you play the child and the parent and you have this this two-way conversation back and forth did extremely well specifically the ones where you talked about what certain parental practices and phrases actually teach a child it's in these kinds of situations where you've been able to express creativity and you've seen that creativity validated by your own audience and the pure amount of attention that's been on these videos in the form of millions of views that really present truly a unique and golden opportunity to monetize if you're able to find the right mvo to build around these videos so one idea just off the top of my head is maybe you create a product, say an ebook that is all about the unrealized meanings behind what you say as a parent. So that's, quite, that's sort of my way of encapsulating the, the, the common idea between these, these videos that have been able to pull in over a million views. And in this ebook, it's basically a list of these concepts that you would you would talk about and just create as, as TikTok videos. But you continue to create these videos, which I noticed you haven't done in a while. And maybe at the very end, you talk about how this lesson learned was from your ebook. And the ebook is $7. It's one of those flagship offers in your link landing page. And especially if you're pulling in millions of views and you're mentioning that in front of millions of people, something like this could, could decently sell at high volume. Now, I also spent some time giving gated content some thoughts, ways that you could capitalize on that. And I was doing some research on social media in the parenting domain to try to find the most popular videos that consistently went viral. And I tell you, the one that I landed on were interviews, interviews with parents. So this is just me thinking off the top of my head. And obviously, you know your personality and, and your landscape again, far better than I do. So take all of this with a, a big fat Himalayan grain of salt. But an idea that could potentially be a viral video idea, but also great gated content that would have, I can tell you, good reception would be to maybe interview 100 parents or maybe not 100, but you know, a decent number of parents. And you ask them what their biggest regrets were with maybe how they parented their children, for example. Almost something that helps parents avoid 
like a worst case scenario with their child, something like that. I it just know it has that viral punch factor for TikTok. And by the way, this is not just exclusive to the parenting landscape. Anyone who's listening, this idea is something, this is a formula that we apply across many different niches on TikTok as well, because from a human psychological standpoint, who doesn't want to know what the actions are that evolved into potential regrets for people, right? Like that's 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 content that people can't say no to. And as some homework, I might look into the YouTube channel Jubilee. They do a lot of this content and they consistently go viral with it. So looking at how they structure their short form content. When it comes to the content itself, one quick tip is to limit the amount of these kinds of announcement videos. We actually call these maintenance videos for TikTok and they're there to harvest the attention that's been on your profile, usually redirect to some sort of call to action or I see in a lot of these you, you have workshops that you host, which I think is awesome. But I would probably use TikTok stories for the same purpose. Actually, I'm willing to bet you probably have a larger amount of eyeballs on your stories versus these videos, simply because stories is, in my opinion, a very undervalued medium for attention. But if you continue to post these maintenance videos, I would always do it after a breakthrough video. Make sure you have a video on your account that, that does really well, that sort of surpasses the normal threshold for performance. Post one of these maintenance videos. Uh, I wouldn't do it after a string of videos that are sort of subpar in their performance performance because a video like this, a maintenance video, it's usually expected that they are going to have the least amount of engagement out of the week and they can anchor the momentum for your account a little bit further than expected. Now, on a little bit of a different note, very similar to what I mentioned for Frostop's profile, which we previously reviewed, I would try to do some due diligence, and perhaps you've already done this, in trying to find a company whose product or service that you actively use or want to make use of that's obviously relevant to the parenting landscape that is a company you want to be in collaboration with and would love to be involved in some sort of paid partnership with long term. What I might actually encourage you to do, and I know creators who have done this with lots of success, is actually create an idea around the product or the service that you know will do well, post the video, wait for it to pull in something like 100,000 views, and then send the video directly to the company. In terms of outreach, I would structure an email very similar to this. This actually is an email that I sent to a software company that I landed a partnership with last year. And really the entire goal behind all this is ultimately you want to get to the point where you limit the amount, you limit the high volume of low sponsorships for a profile like yours. Because I have no doubt you probably get pitched on email, you probably get pitched in DMs, and you really want to be in a situation where you're outputting content on a regular basis for a company that you really believe in and that you want to partner with long term. And I would mention that maybe to any of these companies you're considering partnering with for a single video, mention that you're looking for long term partnerships. And if you can work something out that maximizes the amount of time that you work together over a long period of time, that's where you want to be taking the monetization with brand deals and in indirect monetization for an account like this. The last thing I'll mention, and then I promise I'll, I'll shut up after this, is I would probably take some steps to get affiliates better integrated into the, in the entire monetization workflow. I noticed that you had the June for Kids app linked in your bio. I would reach out to a company like this. Maybe they don't offer an affiliate commission for the June app if that is a free product, but if they have any other paid subscription service or they're considering developing a paid tier for an app like this, you could potentially get a kickback from that. Or could you create content for an app like this? I would be thinking about those conversations because an account of your size with over 200,000 followers with a very niche audience, parents, is a very, very valuable digital asset for any company, especially when it comes to creating something like an app. I understand too that probably a lot of these links are just your peer recommendations to your audience, but if there are any other tools out there, tools that maybe you have yet to explore or yet to receive a reply back from a company you might choose to reach out to that you feel are tools that could legitimately help problems that parents deal with in this parenting landscape, you have a platform, an incredible audience that you can very profitably share any of these apps or products to and receive an affiliate kickback for. So I'd probably spend some time in that vein of thought. But other than that, really, really, truly well done with the profile. You're checking a lot of the monetization box already and keep that momentum on a roll. Wow, what a monster of a TikTok monetization crash course this entire video has been. Listen, it took me a long time to put this video together, research, editing, which I still have yet to do. So it would mean the world to me if you would like this video and share it on a TikTok story or an Instagram story, make sure you tag me. I'm really hoping this video could be a good stepping stone in helping creators better understand how to actually turn a profit with this attention they've been able to amass and turn a profit on their TikTok creative efforts. So if you would help me in furthering that objective just by sharing this video, that would mean the world to me. Thank you all so much for watching. There's an entire practical encyclopedia dictionary of resources that were all mentioned throughout this video, including the slides for this presentation that are available in the description. So please take advantage of those. Feel free to check out some of our paid resources as well, which could also help fill in some of those monetization voids for you. Again, all this will be found below this video.